and welcome back to the shop this video i will be walking us through bleeding the hydraulic clutch on these ktms husqvarna's and gas gases it's going to be pretty much the same steps for your 65s all the way up to 500s it, they all use the hydraulic clutch and these are, these things are a real pain in the butt to bleed let me tell you but if you know how to do it it goes pretty easily and pretty seam seamlessly troy hubbard suggested this video and thank you for that so let's dig into it the first thing I need to do is get the reservoir cover off here. Now this bike's currently bled well. I just uh, decided to use it for this video. Um, because I don't have one here that's not bled well right now. But um, the reason these are so difficult to bleed is they don't really, they don't push a lot of fluid. When you pull the lever in, they don't push a lot of fluid down the line. So what happens is if you have a big air bubble in the system, it just kind of keeps sending it back and forth, back and forth. And it never seems to get it done you have to get enough of the air out before you can actually do the traditional pump, hold, release, it spits out the fluid, tighten it back up, let go, pump, hold, release, all that. You know, you have to get a significant amount of fluid in there first before that process will actually work on these. And on these KTMs, it actually it's kind of the same way with their brakes too. So this this uh these steps are going to work for their front brake and their rear brake as well. I just chose to use the math the uh the the clutch cylinder for it because that is the most difficult out of the three to do. The best way to do this is with a vacuum bleeder and we're going to start off by doing it with the vacuum bleeder but after I show you how to do it with the vacuum bleeder I will show you another way that where you don't have to buy anything to do it where if you're just in a pinch and you need to get it done and you don't have time to wait for this to arrive or go out and buy one I'm going to show you a way to do that too but first let me show you how to do it with the vacuum bleeder. Before I get started, let me fill this up to the tippy tippy top with dot four. Um, some of the older KTM's on the cap will say use mineral oil. On them, I have found that dot four will work, even though they say state use mineral oil. Their mineral oil is pretty expensive. But I do know there are some cheaper alternatives, but dot four will get you by. All right, let's go down below. Okay, I got the vacuum bleeder pump thing all set up I'm just showing you right here how you how you set it up out of the uh, out of the box there you go on the lid right here it'll say to pump so make sure you have that connected to the pump but because the hoses that come with this kit are really for automotive I had to put this smaller hose inside of here to build fit that really small nipple that they use there this takes a six millimeter loosen it up We'll just loosen it up real quick. You'll see it start pushing a little bit of fluid out. It's just gravity bleeding. The gravity from up top will push it down. But anyway, you hook that up. Get back here a little bit and show you. And you just start creating a vacuum. Uh, let me get the camera on this a little better. There you go. You can see the air bubbles or the yeah the. Now you will see air bubbles too because this little fitting right here doesn't seal perfectly but that's okay as long as it's sucking on it. And while you do this keep track up top. Make sure you don't suck your reservoir dry. If you suck that reservoir dry you'll see it's lowering. If you suck it dry well you have to start all over. So while it's doing that if you have a 6 millimeter wrench you can tighten it up. If you don't then what, what I do is I just pull it off stick my finger over it like this. I grab my ratchet here, I will place it on top, and then I will pull the lever in, the clutch lever in, and hold it in for a second as I tighten it up. There we go. And now it is bled well. I will fill that back up and put the cover back on. Now if your system was bone dry, it's gonna you're gonna have to do quite a bit more sucking than that uh, you'll have to fill this up go down there create a vacuum it's nice to have a, a helping hand that can sit up here and monitor this and just keep tapping it off if you don't have a helping hand you'll have to stop somewhere midway keep checking on this fill it back up and keep doing it until you're pretty you're pretty confident that you pushed all the way through because all you're doing is you'll be pulling all the fluid down the line and up here it's gonna bring any air with it and you're sucking it out here and it bleeds it perfectly so the vacuum bleeder is the best way to do it but if you don't have a vacuum bleeder you can push fluid instead and I'll show you how to do it at home 
you uh what I did here is I took an old bottle brake brake fluid drilled a small hole in the lid here stuck a vacuum line in there that would just barely fit and cinch it down tightly now you can see this has gotten a little dirty in here I used it for something else so I'm not gonna be using this today on this bike I don't want to send that trash up there so make sure it's a clean one that's why I suggest using what like one of your old brake fluid containers or even your current one and just uh, keep keep a hose in it you know and and uh, but yeah you just drill a hole in it so that a vacuum hose will barely bear a rubber hose will barely fit in it and then uh, of course I made I had to put a fitting over it like that to get it to fit perfectly to these so you make sure you have some fluid in here you flip it upside down now your fluid will be right there you connect or you loosen this up like I did earlier so you open it you connect this to it I'll connect it to it but like I said I'm not going to be pushing any fluid and then you just squeeze squeeze this and you'll watch the fluid come down the line and it'll, it'll, it'll push fluid up all the way up the line all the way up to the uh, to the reservoir up top it'll, it'll fill the reservoir up up top and you keep you keep squeezing this and keep pushing fluid until that reservoir up top is completely full or pretty close to it then you stop you close this off real quick you let go of this thing and then you come back with your six millimeter wrench or a ratchet and you loosen this back up because now even though you push fluid in and out there can still be an air bubble right here at the top any air bubble up in the line any air bubbles have been pushed up and out to the top reservoir but sometimes there can still be an air bubble right here because they'll push the fluid in but there can still be an air pocket right here so we have to get rid of that so what you'll do then is you'll just do the old traditional bleed right so you'll just loosen this up I'm gonna do it right here put your finger over it come up top up here and uh, well hold on it's gonna be hard to get it on camera but I'll try squeeze the lever in as my finger is down here uh, acting like a one-way check valve and I'll let the lever out squeeze it in you'll see the fluid coming out let it out squeeze it in and you'll do that until you feel no more air you'll hear and feel the air balls go <laughs> as they come out as soon as it's just fluid, you can feel on my finger here that there's just fluid. As soon as it's only fluid, then you hold the lever in, you come back down here, and while you're holding it in, you tighten it back up. And I'm showing you a six millimeter socket here because most people don't actually have a six millimeter wrench around, but I think everyone has a six millimeter socket. So now this is nice and tight. I'll put this cover back on. Come up here and check it out. Nice and bled. I'll fill that back up with fluid, cap it off, and we'll be good. And that's pretty much it. That's how you, two ways that you can bleed the the uh, hydraulic clutch on these KTM Susquehannas and gas gases. Same with the brakes as well. Um, the bigger bikes aren't so bad as far as bleeding them the traditional traditional way, front and rear. However, I will say the 65s and the 50s are pretty much just as difficult as the hydraulic clutches and you'll either have to use the uh, the vacuum method that I showed you or the push method that I show you but one of them two will get it done I guess that's pretty much a wrap now I'm going to do a top end on this bike so I'll catch you guys in the next video